which authorizes special use of properties known as 7 through 13 West Franklin Street, 4 through 14 West Main Street, and 101 West Franklin Street as a parking area and a hotel with access for uses. Item number 9, ordinance number 2012173, to authorize the special use of the property known as 1322 West Broad Street for the purposes of a multi fill dwelling with 19 units and use is permanent for the B6 mixed use business district. Item number 11, ordinance number 2012-178, so then ordinance number 2012-3470, by amending the fiscal year 2012-2013 capital budget by transferring and appropriating funds in the amount of $1,500,000 from the school's planning and construction project in the education category to the school's ADA compliance project. Also, in the capital improvement program for fiscal year 2012 2013 and for the four fiscal years thereafter, by transferring $2,700,000 from the school's ADA compliance project. Item number 12, ordinance number 2012 179, to authorize the CAO to accept $785,000 from VDOT and to appropriate an increase to the fiscal year 2012 2013 capital budget by increasing the estimated revenues and the amount appropriated to the Department of Public Works for the purpose of constructing a roundabout at the intersection of Brooklyn Park Boulevard, Dill Avenue, 2nd Avenue, and Melbourne Road. That concludes our consent agenda for the evening. Thank you, Madam Clerk. At this time, is there anybody to speak in favor of any of the papers that are on the um, consent agenda? Anyone to speak in opposition? Uh, my name is Chris Dorsey. Uh, I am going to speak against uh, everything as usual this illegitimate body does. And in particular, I want to uh, talk about the Public Private Education Facilities and Infrastructure Act of 2002 and the hard to believe irony of what the Public Private Education uh, Educational Facilities and Infrastructure Act of 2002 does. That's where uh, the money that comes to build this uh, this gigantic monstrosity of a new jail, uh, which probably shouldn't even open up because the city can't lawfully incarcerate people because uh, people keep dying as a result of the Eighth Amendment of this document, which is the law of the land, the U.S. Constitution. Um, however, it's just kind of Orwellian doublespeak, uh, public-private, which is it, Educational Facilities and Infrastructure Act. Well, we know that uh, Neural School is opened and ready for business uh, for uh, um, children with pre-existing health conditions, despite being uh, toxic to, uh, to uh, anyone. And uh, um, meanwhile, that the Educational Facilities and Infrastructure Act goes to locking people up. Um, it's ridiculous. Uh, assume that whatever this body tells you, is, the opposite is true, and you'll start picking up, up on how the government operates. Uh, thank you very much for your time. Thank you, sir. Anyone else? Back to council for discussion. Call the question, please, Mr. Clark. Council is voted on tonight's consent agenda items as presented. Mr. Connor? Aye. This is Devin? Aye. This is Gilbert? Aye. Vice President Robertson? Aye. Mr. Jewell? Aye. Ms. Deville? Aye. Ms. Trammell? Aye. Aye. Mr. Tyler? Aye. President Graffiano? Aye. Those papers have been adopted. Thank you, Madam Clerk. This time, would you please review the list of amendments to tonight's agenda? The amendments to tonight's agenda includes item number two, ordinance number 2012-29, to authorize special use 122 Tempsville Lane for the purpose of authorizing the street and lodge that have a resort and an additional lot to be served by private access East. Continue until October 22nd. 
Item number six, ordinance number 2012-167, to authorize the special use of 2551 Monument Avenue for the purpose of parking of a parking area to serve events occurring on 2501 Monument Avenue. That's continued until November the 12th. Item number seven, ordinance number 2012-168, to amend the ordinance which authorizes special use of 2501 Monument Avenue to authorize the expansion of the number and type of permit event, permitted events on certain terms and conditions. That's continued until November the 12th. Item number 10, ordinance number 2012-177, to transfer funds in the amount of $2,651,986 from the fiscal year 2013 general fund budget and $396,000 from fiscal year 2012-13 Department of Public Utilities Stores and Terminal Service Fund budgets and to amend fiscal year 2012-13 capital budget by appropriating such transfer funds to the Boulevard Redevelopment Preparation Project in the Economic and Community Development category for the purpose of relocating city departments from locations owned by the city along the Boulevard to a location that the city plans to acquire at 1638, 1650, and 1700 Commerce Road. That's continued until October 22nd. Those are the amendments to the, tonight's agenda. Thank you, Mr. Sir. Does any member of council have additional amendments to tonight's agenda? <laughs> Need a motion to amend? Yes. Uh, Mr. Tyler? So moved. Thank you. We're now voting on tonight's um, agenda amendments. Mr. Connor? Aye. Mr. Sanders? Aye. Mr. Hilton? Aye. Madam Vice President Robson? Aye. Mr. Jewell? Aye. Ms. Newhill? Aye. Ms. Trown? Aye. Mr. Tyler? Aye. Madam President Robson? Aye. Thank you. Agenda is before you. Thank you. I believe we have no papers. Do we have any papers to amend the continuous amendment? Madam President, there are no papers to be amended in continuous amendment. At this time, we're going to discuss the comment period. And um, I look at the list of speakers. I know that two of the people who are signed up to speak are candidates for office. So I just remind those people that uh, this is citizen comment time. And I you know, would as the data is respectful and uh, refer to campaign comments during the comment time. Thank you. The first speaker tonight is Melvin Jones. Doctor got that here 
disagree. I disagree with his recommendations and find that, well, I can't read his writing, but, you know, this is something cold steel sent by the city attorney's office. I can I can, I can read this state law book. I know about all this law, but I just, I just, I haven't, I haven't received my disability retirement from the city, and I'm, and I'm eligible for it. So, you know, and then on top of that, now the city is aware of this comp, they're going to change um, medical um, people. People can't get the medicine. I talked to somebody today that had a problem getting the medicine. You know, you got to go through red tape and then they send me cards in the mail. I got cards in the mail to go. Um, I think they, they scrap or whatever the name of the uh, pharmacy company is. That you can go get your medicine, you go to the pharmacy to get your medicine. They say, well, um, I can't go through this, Jones. I mean, what you got to do? And on top of that, I did all the jobs I had to do. And my thing is, if the federal government can grant me my disability, why in the hell can't the city give me my money? So, you know, I'm like this. If you can't give me my money, everything that's been done, and even when I went to the retirement department. They told me what I'm eligible to get. Can you get that? You know, I don't want to have to go across the street to the federal court because I got a whole lot, you know, and I had, and I went through a whole lot of hell there and here. I stopped this building from being blown up one time because some vendor put diesel fuel in the wrong place at the city to supposed to fill up a reserve tank. So I mean, I feel like I did my job there and here. And I, I, and I damn well should be able to get what's, what's due to me without going through all this hell there and here. You know, I mean, like Mr. Hatcher said, being black in the city, you know, it's, it's, it's really rough. And, and, and I think something needs to be done. Because right like now I need to have surgery on my back. And I can't get it done because of the whole work with the insurance company. So I, 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 I strongly urge city council to look at the trustee department, please, because um, they're not going by the rules. Thank you. Ms. Jones, Jennifer Wicker is over here, and she's from the mayor's office. You might want to talk to her. Thank you. The next speaker is Teddy Perm. The next speaker is John Ellis. Madam President, City Council, ladies and gentlemen, uh, I represent the Elk Grove neighborhood watch. And we have a lot of problems getting things done to the city. I've called on there on numerous occasions with no response. Whatsoever. I've uh, had jobs taken out that I've called in for all track and pick up, clean up, because we're trying to clean the neighborhood up to make it a cleaner, safer place for all of us to live where we can actually see the houses next door to us, in front of us, and behind us. This all started back in April at a meeting I attended with my city council lady, Rick Tram. And she swayed me into doing this, and she's been a tremendous help to our neighborhood. She's helped every way. Without her, we wouldn't have one, because I didn't even know what to do. So I called the police department with their help, and especially Reba's help. We got one started. I've got over 80 members now, now for possible 400 which is a good percentage. Nobody thought I would get it done. They told me I had a target on my chest. I live in El Grove, and that's where a lot of crime is. And we have stopped a lot of the breaking and entering simply by cleaning up our neighborhood and working together as friends and neighbors. I don't like to call them neighbors. And I think if the whole city 
could start a program like this, we wouldn't have the crime that we have. I really believe that. That's all I need to say. Thank you for your time. And I'd like to especially thank you for trying to go down the rail. We wouldn't have as many people in the neighborhood. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Johnson. I want to thank you. I know everybody wants to say something, but I want to thank you and everybody like you who work so hard to improve their neighborhoods and make them safe places to live. Thank you very much. Thank you. And John, John, I'd like to thank you for taking all your time that you take, your, your truck, your car, your gas money. I mean, that you don't get paid a penny for what you do, not a penny. I mean, and gas is expensive for you to ride around, ride around, ask your suppliers that you have made up yourself making phone calls, calling people to come to your meetings, and then listening to them. Also, you come to our day of district meeting, you fill out sheets like this for some of your neighbors, and we enter them in the system, and I send them back to you to let you know that we did enter in the system. And I think that it's a shame that our tickets are being cleared when the banks are not being taken care of. And it's pretty bad when all you ask for is like to have an alley cleaned, or the streets cleaned, or um, a trash can. Trash can at the bus stops. The trash cans on the corner. And it's not my fault, and it's not your fault, and it's not um, your neighbors that, that people come and they take the trash cans. I don't know what they do with them, but they're disappearing all over. I know this family and I, we have been speaking about this, and hopefully we can come up with something where people just won't decide to come in the neighborhood and just steal our trash cans. Well, something about this trash can issue. Uh, they're taking that and some scrap to get money from you, okay? We all know that because it's metal. And Ms. Jones, thank you. Kathy, yeah, this is my history? Exactly. Right. Okay. All right. But with these are issues that we're having in the district yeah. all over the city. John, you're so right. They, they do take that and also they take them and use them for um, decorative pieces in front of their homes to, right. to collect trash, you know, like um, cans and stuff like that. But I just wanted to say thank you for you taking your time, not one day a week, but every single day. And I know every day you and I talk, you know, maybe two or three times a day about what you're going to do in this neighborhood. It's just not Joplin, it's Keswick, it's um, Harwood. It's, and, and everybody knows John about the little red truck, right? <laughs> With the name of the box. The little white man the red truck. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's what they call him. The, <laughs> the little white man. Together we'll build a better Richmond, 
with world-class world class education, fiscal responsibility, health care, economic development, inclusive neighborhood plans and initiatives, and the creation of safe and secure neighborhoods. Now, I would challenge each one of y'all to look at this mission. It's right on our page, our city page. That's kind of backwards. Because the first thing that we need to do to make all these other things happen is to make it safe. You cannot build $500 million projects when they've got people murdering each other in, in the area, this is specific area that you're talking about, building and taking all this money to use for those type of projects when you don't have it safe. So what I'm hearing is that this city is going to take millions of dollars and put it on Jeff Davis Highway. We can't get trash cans. We can't get cleanups. We definitely can't get the police to come out and do their best job. How do I know this? Because I too study these abstracts. I look at these other cities. I look at Newark, New Jersey, a city that had, let's see, here, this is coming from Fannie Mae, 2,735 2, violent crimes per 100,000 people. They reduced it to, reduced it by 75% by 2002 by including, um, you know, and I'm going to take it maybe, maybe a second more, um, by including an initiative sponsored through Rutgers that helped the communities come up with an initiative of community members like me. Now, people are appointed by the mayor, people like me that are affected. So what I want to walk away from here today from y'all is the commitment that for Southside, and for East End, we will come up with those groups of people, people that are affected, that can sit and talk to the mayor and to the council people and anyone else to let them know what's really going on. And then I expect that when we do that, you're going to come back and really follow up on what we say. Thank you. Thank you very much. Tracy. Thank you. I want to thank you because I have all of these emails, these emails from way back where you have been begging. Yes. And, and well, almost a year. All of these emails, the sheets that they fill out, and I think you've got to reply to that for me when we put yes, them in the type team and they're working on them. Don't know how long it's going to be because some of the tickets, as I said earlier, are being cleared. And what they do, they, they come out there, look at it, they clear the ticket, never touch it. But what I want to say is something that Mr. Marshall, I know Mr. Marshall's working on it, but you know he doesn't know unless we tell him, and who knows best than the people that live in that neighborhood, as you and I have discussed this. Why have a mayor's impact team when they don't live in there? I don't see that going up in the good guy. I don't see no shootings going on in Brookberry, and if it is a shooting, you got what, 50 police officers 24 7 around the clock. Not over there in Blackwell, Jefferson Davis had a shooting um, what, a week ago behind my house. In the hour behind where the young man died from murders in two years. One hour. One hour they got it. I'm just saying murders in two years. There's a problem. And the problem has to be addressed. It has to be addressed by people like me. That is that you made the next one. And I appreciate that. Thank you very much. Thank you. But I don't want to go away from here, Madam President, with an excellent idea, or you turning your face that way and making faces like this is not affecting you. Because this one affects you. It affects whatever affects. Any neighborhood in the city affects me. And I want you to stand by that because you can make us have a I'm not getting to one, I'm one with you. That matter. I didn't turn your face that way when I said what I had to say. So that shows a level of thank you of not paying attention. Thank you very much. Tracy. No, I'm not thanking you for that. Tracy. I'm scalding you for that. You can scald me, but your time is up. So Tracy. Tracy. Yes, ma'am. Come here. I want to say thank you because you have worked with the Captain Silva LME at First Precinct. She was over there on September the 26th when we had the shooting and the person was killed. She was there with us, with Major Steve Drew, with all the other officers. You work with them, you and Pam, and some of the other neighbors that come out from your homes, not staying behind the closed doors, sitting there saying, I'm not going to get involved. You got involved. You yes. gave the police a lot of information that they have been able to solve some of the issues over there. Now we have every, I think, all kinds of agencies over there in, in Oak Road, Blackwell, Hillside, right now working together. 
many, many agencies. And no, crime is not going to go up. The murder rate is not going to go up because of people like all of us sticking together, coming together. We resent that statement from Mr. Mayor saying that the murder rate is going to go up. No, it's not going to go up because we're going to see that it doesn't because we're the ones that live there. We're going to take back our neighborhoods. And that's what they would watch and all of that. Thanks. Thank you, Tracy. The next speaker is Pamela Smith Simmons.
you have a police chief who has applied for four positions in other cities, that tells me that he's not interested in enrichment any longer. That gives me no teacher. Thank you very much. Uh, that's all. Pam, I want to um, thank you for doing Tracy to start the neighborhood watch over there on Chicago Avenue because I know there's not a uh, Blackwell Civic Association and you all took it upon yourselves to have the neighborhood watch. That's some of the ones that we have started. And, and I want to thank you. I'm not going to take much of your time. I want to thank you. And sometimes you do have to go uh, against the grain. And I respect you for that. Yes. Because you truly care about people in your neighborhood, and that's Thank why you man. continuously get through. Thank you very much. Man, we need to have we need to have a mayor that supports our police chief that says our chief is doing a great job with the community. It's called community policing. Right. Got to keep that going too. Right. Not for someone not to answer a question when a reporter asks him, "Do you think chief is doing a good job?" The chief, those officers, are doing a great job out there because they know that hey, they need to work with us and they do work with us. Well, uh, excuse me, ma'am, your time. The police are joining Excuse me, ma'am. But you know, remember what I thank said. Thank you very much. He thank you for coming down. And thank you for, for what you do for your community. We appreciate it. And we will be supporting you. For all the states. Thank you. So that tells me. The next speaker is Patina Carr. Good evening. Good evening, members of the City Council, President Graziano, and Vice President Robertson. My name is Albertina Carter, and I reside in the 8th District. Councilwoman Weaver Trammell is my council representative. I come before you this evening to speak about the escalation of crime in the Oak Grove and Blackwall areas of the 8th District. I spent 26 years with the Richmond Police Department and retired five years ago as a police captain. I worked assignments in uniform patrol during the times when Richmond was seeing 100 plus murders per year and when Richmond was dubbed the murder capital of the South. I worked most of the public housing communities where the murders were occurring and witnessed firsthand the harsh emotional impact that those crimes were having on our children and young people. Today, as I talk with residents of my district about the recent murders, I again am witnessing how these murders are negatively impacting them and the lives of their children. All too often, our children are seeing the yellow police tape in their neighborhoods. Those tapes that indicate that a murder or some other serious crime has occurred. Yet, we expect our children to be normal. We expect them to excel in school and to pass SOLs. That's not normal. It is not normal. Our children are supposed to grow up in neighborhoods that are vi vibrant neighborhoods not in those types of environments. I implore you, and specifically the mayor, to work with Chief Norwood and others to develop a comprehensive plan to address the upswing in murders in our community. Last week, I met with Chief Norwood about this very issue, and I know that he has already planned initiatives that I believe will be beneficial to the residents of Oak Grove and Blackwell. One of his initiatives, and he's given me permission to talk about it, um, involves an actual visit by him and his entire command staff, which is 30 strong, to the communities of Oak Grove and Blackwell. He, not just the patrol officers, but he, and members of his command staff will knock on doors, talk with neighbors to ensure that all of you know, their concerns, concerns, please begin to not police concerns, 
but their concerns are being addressed. In closing, I ask that we not take a defeatist mindset by, and I quote, expecting more murders to occur, end of quote, but that you instead be proactive and develop good strategies to combat crime in our communities. Our children are Here's suffering enough. Thank you. They deserve better, and we need to do whatever we can to help them. Thank you, and I appreciate your time and your attention. I would be able to thank you for coming down tonight. Madam President, yes ma'am. I want to thank you for, what, for your comments tonight. And as you said, every neighborhood deserves clean, safe neighborhoods. Every neighborhood. It doesn't matter if it's Blackwell, Oak Road, Jefferson Davis, Harwood, Hillside, Bellamy. It doesn't matter where it is. Brookbury, Adams Park, um, Woodstock, McGuire. It means everywhere. Old Milwaukee and Turnpike, let's not forget them. Let's not forget Southside Plaza, Brandon Road, all up in there. Everybody deserves, and those children that have to go to school, that live in some of the areas, they have to listen to the gunshots, listen to the loud music 2 a.m. in the morning, and we expect them to get up in the morning, go to school, and be fresh. That can't happen. And, and, and as the Chief has said, we're going to take back our neighborhoods. We're going to continue to work together for more neighborhood watches and be neighbors and friends together. Everybody in this room, from Rosa Jones, Oak Grove Civic Association, to Marie Hart, the Jeroboam Civic Association, Tracy Pam, all of you, John Ellis, even you that get involved. Way back when I you know, first started having our agency meeting, you were coming there asking and listening to the children and listening to the parents with different issues that they had. So I want to thank you for what you said and I want to thank you for having me with the chief and we're not going to let murder rates go back up to 160. Not That's not going to happen. We're taking back our eighth district and our city of the Richmond. The mayor don't want you, so be it, but we're going to. With our police chief, Thank you. Thank, thank you for your support in our community. Thank you. Thank you, Jim. Marty's got something. Madam President. Yes, sir, Mr. Mr. Mr.
from the so-called second responders and walked towards the door within that neighborhood, spoke with the people, asked them if they wanted counseling services if they had children living in their home. Uh, there's organizations out there, Mr. Tyler's on the board, one of them, uh, that deal with this issue of, of children who are witness to or affected by violent crime. So there, there is a group out there, I appreciate you bringing up the issue, but it is extremely important. Uh, and, you know, when, a few years ago, we turned around this stuff when people decided that they weren't going to hide behind their curtains anymore, that they weren't going to go out there for a crime. Uh, and we have a high closure rate. I think the message still is, if you commit a crime in the city of Richmond, more than likely you're going to get caught. Uh, but we've got to have those eyes and ears out there. And the minute that people don't or decide that they aren't going to do that, it's going to be a reversal of what we've had. So thank you for bringing that up. Thank you for coming to speak to us. And uh, I know sometimes it's a little messy, uh, but asking the people to come forward and us doing, listening to them and then reflecting change that they want. That's not nice and orderly necessarily. It's not a top-down approach, but it's the one that's effective and I uh, implore us to use that. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Hilbert. And I want to thank the citizens that came down here. I think that everyone in the city feels um, feels the pain and compassion for your neighborhood and what you've been through. And I know Mr. Bessler is here. Uh, to speak uh, to what the city has done. And I want to thank one more time the citizens that came down here and the citizens that worked so hard <coughs> to keep their neighborhood safe. Um, we do appreciate it. Thank you. And our neighbors appreciate it also. Especially you have you can tell us what's going on? Yes, thank you, Madam President. My name is Chris Beschler. I'm the Deputy Chief. Uh, administrative officer. Um, what I'd like to do is to communicate to the residents of this community because of uh, the loss of life certainly is unbelievably tragic. Um, and the city council, what, what work has gone on in uh, recent weeks and have uh, some uh, <coughs> the council. And anybody in the public would, would like it. Do you have copies of that for those citizens too? I, I have 28 copies of the but I can get as many as you can. Okay. Okay. Thank you. 
in the most partial or in the most it's the problem is, the frustration is, is when we get these sheets and we enter them in the system and it takes months, I mean, you keep the party saying years, to get the street lights fixed, to get the alleys clean. They're seniors, they can't clean us out. Over there on Wamsey Boulevard, LaGuardia, they can't, those seniors can't get out there and cut those ditches. They're going to get hit by cars. They're going 60 to 70 miles an hour over there. And that's why, you know, when you walk on Lonsley Boulevard, it's this much. It's this much of a road to walk on. You have a ditch that drops off here. You have weeds that are here. You have the lighting that's not bright. That, that, that's what people are, are getting to me that I've never met a system. I can't tell, and neither can none of us up here, tell us city employees where to go or how to do their, their job or what to do. We can request on these sheets. And they might, some of them do get done, but when you, they wait months and, and weeks and years for it not to get done. Here it is, they, they sign petitions. Powell Court, Coral Avenue, Bed Rock, Evergreen. They have the street lights over there. The petitions got signed. And as of today, they're telling me nothing's been done. The trees have been cut away from the lights. The lights have not been done. That they don't want, the seniors over there, they don't want to see the same thing in that area off of Woodstock, in that area off of Broadrock, that's happening right now in some of the other areas. And they come out and they report things and they, they tell us what's going on. But they said this would not happen over there at Adams Park or in Brookbury, but it's happening over here. These are beautiful homes too. These are these are people that pay their taxes. They want the same, they want the same thing for their neighborhoods as other places in the A Ford and other parts of the city. Just like they want it. I want it. I live off of Jefferson Davis 54 years, 2709 H A D E N Avenue. That's where I live. This this is the frustrations we feel. And it's not fair to me, and it's not fair to them. As I said, we love you, we love Mr. Marshall, y'all are doing it's something else that's breaking down. And also people need to realize that when we cut our budget, we didn't we're not hiring people out there. We need more people on the street. That's why I hear every day. We need more workers out here, more people to cut the trees, more people to fix the lights, more people to clean our alleys. Why should we clean the alleys? We're taxpayers. We are elderly. We can't do it. We're in wheelchairs and we get written up. Like the guy Mom's that got written up. He's in a wheelchair. He can't cut that alley. I mean that, that ditch over there. They're killing. That's what we're saying. We are we are disgusted. We're, we're, we're upset, we're mad when these things are not being taken care of until we have something that they have to come down here and take their time and say, what's going on here? What do we do, Chris? What do we do, Mr. Marshall? Harvey Powers. 
I, you know, if it's a police issue, it goes back to them. If it's something that, that we're dealing with, it goes to them with the numbers on here. I even was putting Zane Robertson's number one there. Again, if you give it to me, I'll make sure they get to All right, okay. What about the petition with the, that I gave you about the South Austin Long Slate? Remember, I gave you petitions that they signed? The South Austin Long Slate was four hundred twenty thousand dollars We are moving to get the design work done. We will get the design work done. And get those South Austin put in, in the next uh, South Austin. Okay, the next, next CIP cycle. And then one more thing, Mr. Marsh. If we could, if we could maybe not make the citizens clean those alleys or clean those ditches when they put their lives in danger, I know I've walked Romsley many, many, many days and seen it, and it almost got hit. And even it's it's not good. It's not good when, when it's a drop off like that, and then at night when it's pitch dark over there, and then weeds, but not only there, Chapel Drive on the wire. Everyone, I need you to do my work is. Either give me the addresses or I can have someone sit with you. Where if someone has a branch ditch that is dangerous that they can't cut because they might get hurt, or if they are elderly, what we can do is we can get an easement from them. And we can actually take care of the branch ditching in some cases. So well, Chris can help give actual direction on that, but I know we have some latitude there. Yeah. Oh, I just need the addresses. We have DP to go out and look at it. We'll give it to you because, like I said, I've got it over here on public court for old dead rock and green, but they're begging for the trees to be trimmed and they get petitions too. And I, I appreciate this. Thank you. Madam President. Yes, sir, Mr. Gill. The, uh, no, no, the, uh, the problems we're, we're looking at are pretty, pretty, pretty complex. Um, the fact is that, that under Mayor Wilder, we passed a ordinance allowing uh, inmate labor to clean private lots that have grown up and have become white, uh, where we passed on the bill for that um, uh, to the taxpayer that owns the property. The problem is we had contractors clearing off those lots for profitable work that were cut out with replacement of free inmate labor. It is idiotic to do that when we've got other ways that old folk own the property, they can't cut that, that brush back in those alleys. They're responsible for it all the way out to the middle of the alley and all the way out in front to the middle of the street. But these other folk and disabled people can't do it. That's where you need inmate labor. If anywhere, we got it backwards. And I'm hopeful and I'm going to see if we can reconsider that, that ordinance to see if we can turn it back around. All over town, the problem in neighborhoods uh, 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 with debris has to do with alley debris. They can cut that stuff back. That's the first one. The other is originally DPW uh, was responsible, of course, for clean, cutting all the right of way grass and, of course, all the media. Well, then we put all the parts on the public works. Now they got to cut all the parts and the right of way the media. Now we put all the schools on public works. Didn't we have enough employees to do the work? Didn't transfer all the equipment they needed to get it done, and they got behind so bad that you had to pull crews off the road crew to help with the grass cutting crew. This is idiotic, yet we got an unprecedented $97 million in the rainy day fund because this mayor wants a triple A bond rating. You can't get a triple A bond rating unless we cut this god awful poverty rate in half, yet there's nothing in the budget to cut the poverty rate, including not giving schools all their money, which is an anti-poverty measure, including not having employment services in the city of Richmond, which is the best antidote to poverty. 
We've got things upside down that need to get right side up. And I'm hopeful that this exercise tonight opens the door for us to get serious about city services. Because this report that I just passed out to y'all is a is a shameful. This citizen satisfaction report, it's shameful. I know we can do better. We've got people who can get it done. But it ain't going to get done doing the same thing we've been doing. I can tell you that. So, uh, I know that neighborhood over there, and I know they've been asking for help for years. Yes. And they've been neglected for reasons that might be, might be discernible. I'm going to leave that there. Thanks. Property. <clears throat> the fact that they were trying to sell the program. 
happy to tell you that we're working through that now. Hopefully, this, by next week, this time we'll have an offer resolved that, that project will move forward. Uh, secondly, uh, Bill Strickland is going to be in town this Thursday and Friday for our Manchester Bidwell program. Uh, Bill has done a lot of formal setup for possible funders for the program uh, that trains kids and also helps workers get trained for actual jobs with public assistance. Number three, uh, we have had a difficult time they turn and drive cleaning up the dump. <coughs> This situation has been going for a long, long time. But anyhow, back on track, this, this coming Saturday, the 13th, we will have a crew out there from New Richmond. And the uh, dump has been turned into a community garden, and we're going to take off with that type of uh, emphasis from this point forward. We also we had several had some residents that attended our uh, district meeting this last time from Worthington Farm, so those folks are going to be calling to get them to uh, set up a, a, an association over there. We, we've not had one, I think, that kind of purpose that whole region over there. But anyhow, we're working on it now, and I'm going to be out there Saturday uh, looking at some of those folks. Uh, the fourth thing is the James River Range Trail. That's the, the uh, you said CSX uh, trail tracks. is 2.3 linear miles in South Richmond. Uh, the Trust for Public Land is now taking over that project and they're going to get people from Jacksonville one of the lines to purchase those and we're in the process of getting that trail into the city's master plan. So I wanted to let you know that was happening. And lastly, we've got our district meeting coming up on the 23rd at 5 o'clock at 5515 Bryce Sunday. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Thomas Samuels. Thank you, Madam President. Uh, Wednesday night, there will be a community forum at uh, William Fox Elementary School. I encourage everybody in the 2nd District to come out. This will be for candidates in the 5th and 2nd Districts for both City Council and School Board. It should prove to be quite an exciting evening. Uh, the next night, you'll probably need this, the food truck food board will be at Hardywood Planks Brewery. Up in the second district, I encourage everybody to come out and support our local food trucks. The fan fall cleanup, as well as carbon next door, will be on October 13th, basically all day long. Museum District Association on the 15th, Historic Jackson Ward on the 16th. And uh, speaking of October 15th, it's important for two other reasons as well. One, it is the voter registration deadline, as I recall. It's important that everybody who is not registered that can be come out. If anybody has any questions on that, don't hesitate to call me 804 690 And lastly, October 15th will be my seventh wedding anniversary. I love you. Thank you for sticking with me for seven years. Uh, the uh, health education, excuse me, education. Services meeting uh, to be held on October 17th at 5 p.m. here at City Hall. Uh, our plan discussion items are the uh, no overview of Park and Recreation, excuse me, Department of Parks and Recreation before and after school program uh, initiatives. We'll have uh, Dr. Merrifield and the Deputy Director on the end to discuss that. We're also going to go over the open audits uh, that. Uh, those items under the health and human services purview that uh, have not been fulfilled uh, today. We also will be updating uh, on the uh, public schools computer access and uh, how we can try and get that access to our, our students as quickly uh, and efficiently as possible. And we're also going to hear uh, from the Department of Social Services relative to uh, the vacancy rates in that department that's an ongoing uh, agenda item uh, for the committee. We are not having uh, district meetings uh, until November uh, in the third district. As a matter of fact, we're uh, probably uh, going to have a meeting in early uh, to mid-December combined at November and December meetings into one holiday meeting. I'm uh, trying to cut back on I want that, but the rules that we have in place for 90 
90 day uh, notices going out from the city, uh, prohibition for that in the upcoming election. I want to respect that. Well, uh, I'm still available by email and by phone, but uh, I'm here to the regulations the council put in place. Uh, finally, there is the constitutional amendment uh, on the ballot this November of a uh, pending resolution uh, asking that uh, council ask folks to vote no on this constitutional amendment. We heard a report today from the Virginia Municipal League about the unintended consequences of, uh, of this legislation. Uh, it only takes a majority of people to pass the constitutional amendment once it makes it onto the ballot. Uh, and I, I think as I described it this afternoon, it is, a, uh, it is a, an answer looking for a question and a problem. And I hope that folks will get informed about that and vote no. Thank you, Madam President. Thank you, Mr. Elmer. Mr. Patrick? Yes, Your Honor.
The, uh, just want to say, I want to thank y'all for coming down here tonight. Uh, this has been very helpful. Uh, folks hear me fussing a lot. Well, uh, I'll chair the Government Operations Standing Committee of Council. Uh, our job is to provide oversight in proper functioning of city government. And when it doesn't work, uh, somebody got to say it. I've heard this, this, this president, uh, council president, several times now that in the past, um, we, we passed resolutions and even ordinances uh, to force Mayor uh, Wilder to do certain things that this council wanted him. And it seems to me that if we have to do that with this administration, then so be it. Uh, whatever is the case, um, there are too many loose ends out here. Uh, there are too many citizens coming before us making complaints. Uh, they can't seem to get much done over the systems that are in place. Um, tickets that are, uh, that are, are still open, uh, they show up on the computer as closed as if the work has been done, and we all know work has been done. So uh, we've got to find better ways to serve people then, and I'm just hopeful that uh, uh, we'll take that initiative and move forward, and uh, while we work on getting those recommendations from the auditor's office uh, completed. So uh, speaking of which, uh, the Government Operations Standing Committee of Council will meet on the fourth Thursday, that's October 25th at 5 o'clock, second floor large conference room at 5 o'clock, uh, the fourth Thursday of the month, every month. The public is invited. Uh, you are welcome to speak to the public information period of that meeting. If there are present items that you have that we need to be aware of, we invite you to come. We need your input from the public. Uh, that's all I have, Madam President. Thank you, Mr. Jones Robertson. Thank you, Madam President. The, there will be a meeting uh, this Tuesday, October 9th, at the Grinnell Building, which is on Meadowbridge Road, and it's going to be in regards to the traffic commerce that are being placed. Um, on the Bridge, we have three circles, we have a roundabout, um, and so we ask the residents of um, the North Holland Park community and any other residents that are interested to attend this meeting on Tuesday afternoon, at October 9th, from 6 to 7 30. And the Winterfield building is at 3009 Middle Bridge Road. And you can call to the office and ask to speak with Savell. That number is 646-7964 if you'd like additional information in regards to this meeting. I hope that everyone come out. We want to make sure that everybody likes this idea and concept and agree that this would be the effective way to slow down the traffic uh, and slow through the Holland Park community and hopefully help stimulate more retail development along that this is clear. I also have um, great honor, thanks for Mr. Hibbert, um, informing you that the city's Department of Public Utilities is hosting its annual senior weatherization kit giveaway. That will be this Friday, October 12th, from 10 to 2 p.m. at Pleasant Hardware Store, which is located on Broad Street at 2004. West Broad Street. That's this Friday, October 12th, from 10 to 2. Residents uh, 65 and older can drop by and pick up a free box of home weatherization uh, materials, which includes uh, strippings for their windows, socket covers, energy saving light bulbs, dual weather stripping, and draft blockers. You may also have a picture taken with the utility money and have it framed up that the nice Christmas present probably pass on to someone as they enjoy their nice and warm home as a result of the weatherization. Uh, so we want to encourage you to come by. There will also be other service providers um, that provide services for senior citizens that will be on and available to answer other questions that have students may have. 
Friday, October 12th, at Pleasant Hardware Store on Broad Street. Also, Madam uh, President, I want to um, put out um, a recruitment announcement. Uh, we are in the process of putting together a bicycling team in preparation of putting residents on the Cannon Creek Greenway that Mr. Buell is so, so fine, uh, proud of and is the East Coast Connector. Um, and um, we are recruiting residents to be a part of our Lesco Viking um, team. We are also in the process of recruiting young and those persons that are more of my age as well to be a part of a community band that is in the process of being put together for the whole club. We're ready to entertain the community uh, very shortly. I'd also just like to echo um, our other colleagues' recommendations in release to the registration. We have a very short window left on October 15th uh, for everyone that is not registered to get their registration taken care of. For you all that are registered, we ask you to please get your voter registration card in your purse, in your wallet, wherever you take with you all the time. So that when you show up at the polls uh, on November the 6th, that you have your voter registration card or another form of identification <coughs> with you. But if you have your card, you all should have gotten a new card. Please just put that in place now that you know where it is so that when you get to the polls, there won't be any problems as it relates to um, you have your proper identification for voting. And I want to make one announcement as it relates to the Durlock structure legislation that was before us. I uh, had a meeting with the attorneys as well as with the administration and our staff and discussed the um, legislation as it is currently presented. Uh, we're going to revise that legislation. Uh, we plan to continue that legislation for a while. We have details discussion earlier today about the life of properties and the challenges related to legislation. So I just wanted to put that out because I know there were several citizens that were very concerned about that and wanted to have a view as, as to what we were going to be doing about the properties that we were going to so we keep them going as this takes us way back to the council. Thank you, Mr. Robinson. I have a few announcements. First of all, I want to thank Jenny Richmond for the Second Street Festival that was last weekend and invite everybody to go to the Folk Festival this weekend. Um, music is great, food is good, um, and it's a great way to spend a morning or an afternoon. And I want to thank Benjamin Richmond for putting that together for us. I also am having my quarterly meeting Tuesday night at 7 o'clock at St. Luke's. We will discuss the water rates and also there will be someone there from finance to um, talk about how that operation is moving forward. Uh, and the other thing I wanted to mention is that on October 27th at 9 a.m. there will be a budget planning conversation put on the mayor's office. We don't have a location yet, but it's going to be from 9 to 12. And it will be a citizen's opportunity to voice what they think are the priorities for the budget for the budget. And so I hope um, that people will attend 4th District or any district and put their input into the budget process. Uh, and with that, Madam Clerk, would you please read the introduction of the new papers? Madam Clerk, yes ma'am. Okay, you just said that the mayor's going to have a meeting or not? It's going to be five, there going to be five throughout the city. And mm -hmm. throughout the city. Mm -hmm. okay. And the one that, that I was approached on is the date that I got is October 27th. Now, I don't know if it'll be one closer to you or not, since it'll be five for the city. It would be nice if we all knew so that um, all the citizens in the whole city of Richmond. Yeah. You, want, you want to give us that schedule? Do you have it? Or can you get it to us? Madam President, I know that there has been a representation from the mayor's office calling me to try to just get a link with us for those meetings. Um, I have a scheduled one. Um, <coughs> yeah. 
And this, somebody called my office to see all this. Is, is all of you in the morning, afternoon, nights? Do we know? Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah. And he has a perfect person to answer <laughs> questions right in front of us. Madam President, I'm Sharon Jenkins. Let me just say, we have now five meetings scheduled. We will have nine. Um, we will get the information sent out to you about the dates, because I don't have them in my head right now, but I'll have that sent to you on tomorrow. Okay. And council member, we are asking each council member to tell us the best time and the best location for their district. So we'll work with you to find out. When is best for you? You know what, Ms. It would be really, really nice if you could do this after November 6th. Thank you. <laughs> sound good? No because I know the number one thing in our age district right now is these blighted problems that they think that they can call me or you and tell us to go out there and tear them down. And I know our vice president knows that this is not, we cannot go out there and tear down those blighted properties. Neither can the police department. Call me. 233-7382 is my home. 240-5050 is myself. Don't call the 516-806-790. Okay. Thank you. Okay, now we have the introduction of papers. Yes, Madam President, new legislation for this evening is as follows. Organist number 2012-190 to authorize the CAO to accept $28,650 from the Virginia Department of Motor Vehicles. For the purpose of conducting traffic study initiatives in the city, Council Public Safety Standing Committee, October 15th, Council Public Hearing Week, October 22nd. Ordinance number 2012-191 to authorize the CAO to execute an agreement to sublease between the City Redevelopment and Housing Authority as sublease or and the City as sublease for the purpose of providing office space, storage space, and programming space for the Department of Parks, Recreation, and Community Facilities at 1209 Admiral Street. Council's Land Use Housing and Transportation Standing Committee, October 16th. Council's Public Hearing Date, October 22nd. Ordinance number 2012-192 to amend the City Code by adding a new section for the purpose of exempting new businesses that locate within the City from paying business, professional, and occupational license taxes for a period not to exceed two years. Council's Finance and Economic Development Standing Committee, October 18th. Council's Public Hearing Committee, October 22nd. Ordinance number 2012-193 to amend Ordinance number 2011-170-94 for the purpose of modifying the purposes of which the proceeds of debt issuance is authorized by such ordinance may be used to include and make the appropriations to the city's economic development authority, EDA, to be used by the EDA to finance capital expenditures or to make loans or grants to finance capital expenditures for the purpose of promoting economic development. Council's, economic, Council's Finance Economic Development Standing Committee, October 18th. Council's Public Hearing Date, October 22nd. Ordinance number 2012 194 to authorize the CAO to execute a funding agreement between the city and the school board of the city for the purpose of providing funds for the school board to lease property at 2395 Hermitage Road for usage as a storage facility for various functions located from facilities at the Boulevard. Council's Language, Housing, and Transportation Standing Committee, October 16th. Council's Public Hearing Date, October 22nd. Resolution of 2012-R133 to request the CAO to work with the City Council, the Greater Richmond Chamber of Commerce, and members of the Richmond community to propose a location for the establishment of a defense production and support services zone within the city for a pilot program to assess the potential physical impact, effects, and benefits of establishing defense production and support services zones within the city. Council's Finance, Economic Development Standing Committee, October 18th. Council's Public Hearing Date, October 22nd. Resolution number 2012 r 134 to appoint Robert J. Adams as a member of the Foreign Household Trust Fund Advisory Board. Council's Public Hearing Date, October 22nd. Resolution number 2012 r 135 to appoint Regina Cheney as a member of the Foreign Housing Trust Fund Advisory Board. Council's Public Hearing Date, October 22nd. Resolution number 2012-R136 to appoint me the householder as a member of the Affordable Housing Trust Fund Advisory Board. Council's public hearing date October 27th. 
Resolution number 2012 dash 137 to appoint Joyce M. Knight as a member of the Affordable Housing Trust Fund Advisory Board. Council's public hearing date October 22nd. Resolution number 2012 dash 138 to appoint me S. Johnson as a member of the Affordable Housing Trust Fund Advisory Board. Council's public hearing date October 22nd. And resolution number 2012 dash 139 to appoint G. Andrew May Jr. as a member of the Affordable Housing Trust Fund Advisory Board Council's public hearing date October 22nd. Madam President, that is all of the new legislation that I have for this evening. Madam President. Yes, sir. Mr. Gilbert is the winner of the time study this evening. <laughs> So anyway, you're going to do it.